Hello drummers and other creatures. Today I'm just gonna provide a little bit of an addendum to the video I recently made uh, where I discussed how to play hi-hat off beats or up beats or just playing a hi-hat pattern or a ride pattern if you like on the ands, which can give you this nice bouncy feeling. I associate it with sort of maybe some dancey stuff, disco, maybe in ska, sometimes you hear something like that where the hi-hat uh, embellishes the sort of skanking guitar thing and so on and so forth. It's a, it's a good part of the overall vocabulary that I think every drummer should have to be able to play just the, the offbeats of the eighth notes, the ands of a bar. Uh, I demonstrated this on the hi-hat and the ride as well, and I thought it might be interesting and possibly useful just to add a few extra things that you could do with this. Um, my previous video, I demonstrated everything within an eighth note context. So today, we can take a look at, am I supposed to say today? I don't know, maybe it's not, because maybe it's in the middle of the night where you are, but well, wherever the hell I am, it seems to be daytime, and today I'm going to show you, oh, I'm breaking the rules. Um, today I'm going to show you, did it again. I'm going to show you some 16th note variations you can explore. Uh, remember, well, these videos are a kind of introductory ideas. I'm a little bit skeptical about how deeply one can really go in a YouTube video and how much useful information it's possible to project or broadcast, shall we say, out into the world. But I'm giving it a try. Um, now, Let's see um, the, 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 um, the examples I, I gave originally. Uh, something just regular eights. Stuff like that, and that can take you quite a long way. Um, but let's see what we can do in terms of varying the snare and the bass drum with some 16ths, something like this. You can see all this is completely unplanned, but yeah, you get the idea, right? Um, I'm gonna add some, uh, I call this boogaloo stuff, and uh, uh, it's one of those uh, niggling things that maybe the word boogaloo is problematic these days, or I don't know, but my understanding is that the, the boogaloo is this kind of uh, James Brown type of funk groove. Um, so here would be a boogaloo with eighth notes. that has another name, let me know. Comments below, that's where you put that. Um, but that's a kind of essential James Brownie, Clyde Stubberfieldy, whoever invented that um, funky groove. And um, we've got the snare drum notes playing in between the hi-hats on 16ths, and it's the 2R and the 3E. One and two and a three E and four and. One and two and a three E and four and. Well, this rattling snare is quite annoying, isn't it? I should have done something about that. Okay, no matter, hopefully you can follow. Now, let's try and play that pattern. It's a very common pattern, you'll find it in, in funk and soul and hip hop and all of that good stuff. Um, in rock music, I mean, obviously, Grohl is playing that sort of stuff in Nirvana, uh, Rage Against the Machine, the Chili's, all of that, all that boogaloo -y stuff. Let's try and put that with the hi-hat playing only the ands. So we're gonna have. Let's see if I can do it. No, I, I better do it with my whole body first. Right, that, that works. Now, I'm gonna try it hands only. That's the way to, uh, to think about it a little bit.
And again, you can see the, the sort of the mechanics of it take a little bit of thinking about, partly because there's so much space there. Uh, if I just uh, play that with the eighth notes, I'm kind of alternating. I'm playing kind of single stroke pattern where I'm going one and two, right, left, right, left, right, four and. Yeah, it's basically playing single strokes. If I do the exact hand pattern on the snare, I'm doing this. Okay, right, 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 left, right, left, right, 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 left, right, left, right, right, right. I'm obviously I'm slightly ignoring the two and four snare drum notes, but you get the idea, right? On a tom again, just to make it look uh, more obvious. Right, left, right, left, right. Now, when I take out the numbers and I'm just playing the ands, that comfortable single stroke interaction is sort of gone. And that gives me some space. And in most cases, I'm going to want to count, or I'm going to really want to refer to the, the presence of the quarter note, at least in my mind. So I'm going to go one. Ooh. One. 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 I need to really hold on to the three to make sure those in between notes come out right. Now, as uh, being over emphatic on the snare, in most cases I'm going to play those in between notes, the two R and the three E, I'm going to play those as ghost notes. So, again, putting that into the beat is going to be like this. that makes sense? Um, again, uh, I'm sort of going off the cuff here, but it, it's a good thing to add to the facility to play these offbeat hi-hat notes, okay? The same uh, mechanism applies if you do this on the cymbal. Again, very often you'd be doing that on the bell. So I'm going to do it on the bell. Obviously, you'll play on the bell or the bow of the cymbal as appropriate to whatever you're playing. And I'm also going to put the two and four on, on the hi-hat with my left foot here. Something that you could add uh, to maybe ground you a little bit in the quarters is to play the hi-hat foot on one, two, three, and four on all the quarters. One, two, three, four. All right, and then when you speed that up, Again, it's bouncy and happy. Now, there's other E's and R's you could easily place a snare drum note. Again, usually a ghost note, but depending on what you're playing, that might be a louder note too. But you've got the one E, one uh, and the uh, four R as well those easily lend themselves to um, playing in this way. And obviously there's more complicated stuff that you could do. But I strongly recommend having a go at adding those snare drums uh, into the package once you've got the hang of the variations I talked about in the previous video. Uh, and once you've got the hang of that, it's not a bad idea to do the same with some bass drum 16s. So uh, let's have a think about what we could play. The two R, like we did on the snare. One and two and... And I'm playing there without following it on the three, but I could do that, the two R and then the three. And again, that adds another 
layer of stuff that you can add into this kind of offbeat groove that helps it really bounce along nicely. Um, let's think about, say, the one, uh, one, ah, uh, yeah? One and two, right? One and, one and. One R, the two R, uh, how about the one E? The one E and the R. Shush. Okay. Now, uh, again, uh, do I need to? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll write up a little sheet of, of some ideas. But the, the idea here, uh, more than anything else, is for you to think about how you uh, take a little idea like playing the hi hat or the ride on the ands there, and you develop that vocabulary just using eighth notes at first. And once you've got comfortable with that, you think, oh, how do I? give myself more options there. And so adding those boogaloo snare notes or any kind of ghost note patterns you like with the snare to embellish the two and four backbeat. Obviously there's a lot more you can do with that as far as um, patterns are concerned. And similarly playing some 16th note embellishments as well on top of the regular sort of eighth note stuff. Now, I think there's someone at the door. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful addition to the other video I made about this topic and uh, it's probably time for you to like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you want in the future and most importantly get yourself off and practice.